Hello. Hello, welcome to our eight day training uh, course for Powerhouse Beginner, Powerhouse Beginner course. Um, I'm here with Amolola Alfred. Uh, I am David Alibino. Um, so um, we are presenting to you guys a eight day training course for power apps. Um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to cover a lot of topics in power apps from uh, what power apps is to uh, demos and even building a live app at the end of the course. So I welcome you guys to this uh, course. Um, um, just know that I'm going to get the best of um, um, beginner training in this in this particular course. Um, so at the end of the course, you have the confidence to develop your own functional apps, to interactive power apps. Um, just make sure that you follow uh, updates. Uh, I know that we'll be sending out emails to everyone that has registered. Uh, I hope everyone has gotten their, their mails. Uh, so and with the link to um, the first three sessions of this particular course. So right now, uh, I'm going to hand over to Amulada to uh, start the intro. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Amazing and awesome introduction from you, David. Please confirm that you can hear me clearly. All right, awesome. So let's just um, take a little bit, just a very short break, and we'll be right back. All right, so that is it from us. Everything that David has said, I just to add that, ensure that you follow us from day one to the last day. And you're gonna get maximum and maximum, maximum um, understanding of the Power Platform, all right? So, so let's just quickly go to what we have for today, yes. So we are looking at Power Apps. Based on the registration that we got, we saw that a lot of people are in the John Snow level. So um, in this particular app development, John Snow level basically means that you don't know anything at all about Power Platform. And that's, you know, that's very fine. So we want to basically take everybody from the level of John Snow level to the level that, like David has said, you're very comfortable with Power Platform, especially Power Apps. So our, our focus will be the Power Apps. So you might be wondering what exactly is Power Apps? Um, before we delve into that, our agenda for this first section, before I hand over to David, will be we are going to look at what Power Platform is. We're going to um, help you understand Power Apps inside of Power Platform. I'm going to help you understand the types of apps that you can actually create with the Power Apps. You're also going to understand what this actually means to you, right? Then we're, di we're going to dive in into the component of uh, Power App Studio. So what does Power App Studio look like and how can you begin to develop applications with the Power Apps? And of course, inside the studios are controls. So all of these controls have properties. So we're just gonna explain all of that and you will see it, of course, in the slide and you also see it live because I'll be showing you live, right? So let's go into it now. Like we said, if you don't know anything about Power Platform, it's very fine. What exactly is Power Apps? Anytime you hear of Power Apps, I want you to see it as a child inside a family. The family is the Power Platform, all right? And this child called Power Apps is one of the components in the Power Platform ecosystem. So the Power Platform itself is a cloud-based development platform. What does this mean to you? It means that when you are actually developing with most of the tools inside of the Power Platform, you are developing in the cloud. It means that if I leave my system at home and I take another system and I put in my credentials, I would go to, I can access all the apps that I've built. Why? Because these apps are not stored on a device, right? They are stored where? The cloud. So that's what we mean when we say cloud-based uh, platform because most of the tools are what they are 
um, cloud-based tools. Now, not all the tools in the Power Platform ecosystem are cloud-based tools. And, you know, our focus is actually Power Apps. So the Power Apps is what is a cloud-based development platform. Now, not only is Power Apps actually cloud-based, one of the most important and, you know, why Power Platform is actually, or I would say why Power Apps is a thing, you know, is because Power Apps is actually local. So whether you are somebody that knows how to code so much, or you are somebody that do not know how to code at all, you are welcome to Power Apps, right? You can develop both mobile application and web application with the Power Apps without knowing how to code, okay? So now I've explained, I talked about the Power Platform. I said, anytime you hear of Power Platform, think of it as a family. Now the family has children. So we're going to look at the children inside of Power Platform. So these are the children inside of Power Platform. We have the Power Virtual Agent. So when you have Power Virtual Agent, what does this mean? This basically means that um, you can use this particular tool to build simple chatbots. That's why we call it virtual agents. So they are agents that help you. I don't know if you've ever attended or you've ever entered into any website and you see one small thing at the bottom and it's saying, hi, how can I help you today? So it's actually not somebody at that point in time. What you're seeing at that point in time is what is a chatbot. So with Power Virtual Agent, you can build chatbots. And, you know, building most chatbots, you need to understand Python, you need to understand artificial intelligence and all of that and all of that, you need to be able to put uh, chatbots together. But with Power Virtual Agent, you build simple chatbots just with drag and drop. Of course, when you want to do some complex things, you can actually integrate another child of the Power Platform, which is what? Power Automate. Now, you might be wondering, okay, I, Lola, I get that Power Virtual Agent is for building simple chatbot. What does Power Automate do? Like the word is, right? Any of the child of Power Platform, they all, most of them, they all have power, 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 right? But what they do is the second name. So think of power as what? As the family name, right? And think of the second name as your own first name, okay? So now, Power Automate is used for automating data. So by data, it means that anytime you are typing your information inside a form, most of us, or basically all of us here, we fill the form, right? What we are putting inside that form is what? Is data. So what does Power Automate do? Power Automate help you to send this data to so many places, right? Power Automate can also use this particular data to trigger some things and do some things. For instance, the form that we had done for this particular course, what we did basically was that we created this form and we connected this form to what? To Power Automate. So Power, anytime you fill this form, we already have a message, right? Email and everything attached to it. So once you fill this form, what will happen? Power Automate knows that, oh, Lola has filled this form. David has filled this form. Shadi has filled this form, all right? And what would they do? Or what would Power Automate do at that point in time? Power Automate would help us now as, you know, the organizers. It would help us send you a message. So Power Automate can be triggered based on data. Power Automate can also help you to send data. So you might be thinking, in the context of an organization, how will Power Automate help? Power Automate can just help you, you know, right from where you are seated on your desk. You don't need to start carrying paper all around. Ma, help me sign this. Help me sign this. What will Power Automate do? Power Automate would automatically notify these people and send your data to whoever you want to send your data to. Okay? So that's the Automate in the Power Platform ecosystem. So let's just go right in. So Power Apps, like I said, the second name is their first name. The first name that you can see is their last name, which is their family name. So Power Apps. Power Apps is used for what? It's used for developing applications, all right? Anytime you're developing applications in the Power Platform ecosystem, you are using Power Apps. I'm, I'm going to show you the different types of application that you can actually build with the Power Apps and other things that you can actually do with the Power Apps. 
Now, let's just go to and look at other components that we have in the Power Platform ecosystem. Our focus is Power Apps, so we're coming back to Power Apps, okay? So before I go on, just um, help us put in the chat box where you are joining from so that when I'm doing my introduction or when, when I'm you know, introducing some of these applications to you, I am going to mention your name, all right? So uh, we are going to have this few as if we are actually inside a class together. So help us put in the comment section where you are joining us from and we we'll take it from there. All right, so let's go into the next member of the Power Platform family, which is the Power Pages. What does Power Pages do? Basically, if you've ever seen anybody build website or you've ever entered into any website, Power Pages would help you to build low code website. Like I said, everything in the Power Platform is low code. Low code. Yes, you, you can, you definitely get to a point where, you know, depending on the process, you can now actually integrate um, core coding into your application, JavaScript and all of that, all right? However, basic level, there are some applications that or some solutions that you are going to develop without writing code. There are some solutions that you will develop with what? With low code, right? So um, one of our aim here is actually to help you to be able to develop uh, solutions you know, with the Power Apps using low code. So that's basically with Power Pages, you can build websites. With Power BI, this uh, particular tool is one of the most popular in the Power Platform ecosystem. And the people that really use the Power BI is the data guys, right? Power BI is used for analyzing data. Anytime you hear Power BI, think of data. And with Power BI, Power BI is not just a cloud solution. Power BI has both the cloud side and of course, the desktop side of it. Now let's go to AI Builder. If you've ever heard of artificial intelligence, actually artificial intelligence is actually the buzzword right now. Everybody's saying artificial intelligence, this chat GPT, this artificial intelligence, that. So AI Builder helps us in the Power Platform to actually add artificial intelligence to what? To our solutions that we are building. So now think of it. Why are they calling this solution Power Platform? Because it has, you can build apps, you can automate processes, you can build chatbots, you can build websites, you can analyze data, you can add artificial intelligence to your app. Then you see the green one, and under it you see database. This is uh, the dedicated database for Power Platform. All right? Now, you can see all these tools that I've mentioned. It means that if you actually come into the Power Platform ecosystem, you have different career paths that you can actually choose from, all right? You can decide to be developing solutions. You can decide to be um, IT support. And, you know, you'll be doing your thing in the Power Platform ecosystem. Data guys are in the Power Platform ecosystem. Um, Dynamics 365 guys are in the Power Platform ecosystem. You know, chatbot makers are in the Power Platform ecosystem. So if you are here right now, you are definitely in the right place. Okay, so let us move forward, right? Oh, before we go, you will see something that look like FX right here. And you might be wondering, what is this? This basically is one of the, um, I would say, languages that we use in the Power Platform ecosystem. And that's actually the language that we use inside of Power Apps Canvas app. So you're going to be seeing us as we go further in this class, you're going to be seeing us do a lot of, um, or write a lot of FX, right? So we call it FX. And of course, remember the first name, which is a family name, power, meaning power FX, right? FX is just formulas. So if you've ever written any line of formula at all in Excel, then it is similar to that. So it's not hard, right? It's low code. So you just, for instance, if you want your app to go to the next page, do you know what you're going to write in Power Apps? You're going to just say navigate, right? Of course, it can get complex, but once you understand the basic and you understand the logic to Power Platform, especially Power Apps, you're good to go, all right? So le let's delve uh, deeper. All right, now, what I've put here is examples of Power App solutions. So majorly over time, we have seen how Power Apps developers think. 
anytime you're building with power apps right one of the things you need to understand is that you're building for an organization what do i mean by that i'm basically going to delve into that and i'm going to explain further based on these slides but these are some of the applications that you can actually build right so anytime you're thinking of power platform or power apps i want you to think solution um, um i want you to think in the solution line what do i mean you're building applications okay so when you're building these applications one of the applications that we have here is approvals meaning that in an organization you can help them solve all the approval um, um problem imagine if a bank right say you are working in an organization and you have seventy-five thousand people and these seventy-five thousand people will definitely be seeking for you know they want this they want that and all of that you can create a solution that's going to help them manage the approval process asset management you know you want to create um an application for inspection or auditing you want to create an application that will help them manage their project all of these are things that you can actually create with the power platform okay so let's go deeper now app creation in power apps once you enter the power apps and you click on create which i'll definitely show us just briefly you're going to see options for you to create canvas app for you to create um model driven app and for you to create what power pages so first let canvas app just stick in your mind because that's one of the things that we are really going to delve into in this class so now what have you learned so far you have learned that in the power platform we have different components of power platform you have also learned that inside power platform we have one of them that we'll actually be talking about canvas app you have also learned that um with power apps right you can create canvas app model driven app and what power pages power pages i explained earlier is used for websites so now remember canvas app is what we are actually focusing on in this particular class all right so before we go on you might be thinking okay if it's low code um how do i actually create it um, um who are the people that use it uh, what are the things we use to create it okay if i even know what are the things we use to create it um since it's low code how um is it done right so basically power platform is a platform created by microsoft so for you to be able to use this platform to build application you need to subscribe to what to um you need to buy a license right so basically i'm just going to explain briefly so anytime you think of power apps just know that you have to buy a license so you might be thinking oh i want to learn power apps do i need to buy a license no you actually do not need you don't need to buy a license because you want to learn and that is why we've actually from the mails that we've sent to you we've told you to create a developer account so when you created a developer account that is your own tenant tenant basically mean organization anytime you hear tenant think of organization what does that mean that basically means that as um if if you've ever used applications like outlook applications like um word online especially it means that your organization has actually purchased a microsoft license and you know you can do things like i share a file with david right and when i'm sharing this file with david he's going to have his mail that i'm sharing it to will be david maybe dot added zero um at you know that particular organization dot com you see that particular organization is the tenant here they have purchased a license so they have a tenant that is the organization so microsoft subscription tenant you understand what tenant means now microsoft subscription tenant is the organization we have of course individual productivity that means that this particular anytime you're telling anybody oh i'm a i'm a microsoft power platform developer i can develop an application for you one of the things you need to tell them is oh yes you're going to buy a license however when you're buying a license it is it depends on the size of your organization and that's what we have here you can do small teams you can do individual productivity or you know you can also buy or the organization can purchase a license for a very if they are big and um, everything is captured now you might be thinking if i'm building an app the people that would have access to this app would they only be the people in an organization no 
Remember that we talked about power pages. And when we were talking, we explained that power pages is what is used for building websites. This website is the tool. Just know that power pages is a tool that helps you create a solution that will interface with people outside an organization. Okay? So with power pages, people outside the organization, customers, right, can actually interface with that particular solution that is meant for an organization. So remember, Power Platform, we drew it down to Power Apps, we drew it down to buying of Microsoft subscription, we drew it down to Tenant. Tenant is the organization. And we also said that you can actually interface with what? With people outside the organization. So it's going to get more interesting as we go further. Now, what exactly is Power Apps Canvas app? See, whatever you see with Power Apps Canvas app is exactly what you get, what you drag and drop. So there's something called W-Y-S-I-W-U-Y-G, basically, right? There's a way they pronounce it, but I don't want to pronounce it. <laughs> so what this basically means is what you see is what you get. You can make your app very beautiful. The app can be ugly. It depends on whatever or however you create your application. Okay, let's just go right in. Now, we want to, I want to introduce you to the PAPS Studio. What you're seeing here is what the PAPS Studio looks like, but it wouldn't be interesting if I just show you all of this without actually sharing my screen and showing you um, the PAPS Studio itself. Okay. So I'm just going to show you a Power App Studio itself, what it looks like, what it does, how we can basically use this to help organizations. Okay. So I'm just going to share my screen now and uh, you would have access to all of this. Okay, so I'm sharing now, and you might just see, you know, a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of things. It's because I have so many tabs open. But now, this is my own tenant. If you have created a developer account, what I want you to do is to type um, www.office.com. So once you type www.office.com, right, it's going to take you to a login page. So when you sign in, don't sign up, you sign in. When you sign in, I want you to sign in with um, something like office.com, all right? When you sign in with something that have dot on microsoft.com, that's the tenant that you have created. Mine is freddy at 11 dot on microsoft.com. So when I just put that and I put in my password, it will bring me here, right? And this is home. So I can now go to, from here, go to Power Apps. Or from my browser, I can just type make.powerapps.com. So before I go on, let me also um, say that it is important that you register, right, for this training. So yes, we are actually streaming this on YouTube, but that's why we told you to, you know, subscribe to the channel and all of that. But when you register, what happens is after this class, we will be sending you materials to the email that you have used to register. I'm going to be sending you materials and you know you can use that to learn further. For all of you that have registered, we have sent you materials on how to actually create this developer environment. So you have your own environment. And as we continue to build, you'll be able to build along with us. Okay, so this is what my Power Apps looks like. And what I explained earlier, when you say create, right? I want to create, and I say I want to create a blank app. Can you see the three options, just like I've shown us? Canvas app, model driven, and portal. However, so now what we want to do is we want to create a blank canvas app. Remember that what we are trying to learn is blank canvas app. So we're just, I'm going to just going to, I'm going to name this eight days. Whoops. I'm going to name this eight days 
of power apps all right and i told us that with power platform you can actually create tablet um, um you can create a web version application or you know the size that you can create can be phone now you can see the format here tablet or phone so i selected tablet view and i'm clicking on create so i'm clicking um, i'm basically creating a blank we're going to show you how to even create power apps without writing anything at all all these things i'm going to show you is when you want to build an application from scratch so they call you into an organization because you're a junior power platform developer and they say build us an application all right you can you have two options you just build with the data that they will give you or you decide to actually build your application with what straight from scratch so this is me i want to build my application from scratch this is a uh, power studio i don't even know where to start i don't know what to do now the first thing you need to know is that all of these things are basic are well sectioned right this is the side menu bar all of these things are um they help you to do some particular things what you need to know is what they do what we have here is a top menu bar and i'm going to explain each of these now what we have here this place is where you cook take this place right as your kitchen this is where you cook and this place is your property spain but that is not all we also have footer all this place it will tell you where you are right because Anytime you enter into an application, you will see that all those applications have different screens. For instance, if you enter into your piggy vest, for instance, once you enter into your piggy vest, it will take away that screen and take you to another screen, right? When you are cooking in your kitchen and you look down to this footer, it will tell you, you are where on screen one. If you have named that screen one, um, for instance, say landing page, it will tell you, you are on where the landing page. Now, let us see how do we actually create an application with this particular studio. Remember that we said what you see is what, what you get. So, um, if you come to insert here, there are amazing controls that you can use to build an application. So, controls actually form application. And each of these controls, they have properties. What do I mean? Let me just quickly show you if you select label right this is your text label let there are uh, some things that label does for instance i can use this label to write my header for this application when people maybe come into this application or let me just even make it full right when people come into this application this is my landing page so i'm just going to type in inside this text i'm going to type in eight days of pop uh eight days of power apps how am i going to do that what you need to know is that this is what this is your text control and your text control has amazing properties so this is your properties pane remember i've just dropped in what a control the control that i've just dropped has some properties if i do a drop down these are all the properties okay but how do i use this you need to know what you want to do you want to write something into this label right what you use to write something into the label is a text control so is a text property rather the text property of what of the label control so label that's the control and um you can see here it says label one so if i go to the properties of label one i will see text inside this text i can choose to write it so this place is actually the formula bar this is where you write that power effect that i talked to you about it's very simple so if you want to write text now anything right you need to put it in what double quotes you can actually write it here or you can say oh i don't want to start writing anything in double quotes right you can just come to your properties pane here and write it so let us write eight days of power apps okay so we are writing eight days of power apps this is it ah Lola, you have written eight days of power apps it is not working just click out you see eight days of power apps but this is very small uh how can i make it bigger you can make it bigger using the properties all right you can also correct now you've written eight days of proper of power apps you wrote it here you can come to your uh your formula bar and just change something it would once you click out 
you can see that it is changing but this is small how can i make it bigger there's another property the font size you can see on that property so properties for what i'm writing inside this label is the font size let's just do some magic all right make it 40. if i click out it's bigger okay this is big but you know it does not have light let's put some light remember what you see is what what you get so it depends on your designing power how much you can design so i can decide to you know align center okay well 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 it's looking like it what else can i do remember anytime you go to um piggy vest for instance once you enter you will see piggy vest and that screen will just disappear now if you come to your font you can oh i don't like this font it's just basic you can just turn it to something like this okay this is looking like it how can i add color there's another property so if you come down here or you come down here you will see all your properties right but the difference between this property pane and this property pane is this one once you select it you will write power fx if you come here as you are starting probably you don't really understand power fx yet this one will allow you this one is um friendly more friendly right everything you see here is, is english okay you can see the text you can see that this is a font you can see that this is a font size you can see that this is a font width right i am not using any syntax but when i am writing here right anytime i'm, I'm using any of these guys if i select this i need to write where i need to write inside here and when i'm writing inside here what happens when i'm writing inside here what happens i need to follow a particular syntax you can see that this syntax that i have here is what double quote it means that this is part this is a string right string basically means that i'm writing text okay so make it simple how can i add color let us switch and use this guy to add color just go to what go to the fuel property right what lola what if i don't know what fuel property is and i don't know that it's fuel property that will actually give us color you can just come here that is what we use this place for once you come here this color that you have here is for the text if i don't want the text to be black and i want it to be yellow this is what i will do all right and now i want the background i don't want the background to be white i want the background to be something something like burgundy right I will just select the burgundy and what do we have here we have something more beautiful based on what you are doing okay now what if um i just i want to be able to go to another screen there's another control that you will use for that is a screen here in your top menu bar you can see screen here so just select new screen it will ask you because there are so many types of screen that you can actually create so we can create what the blank screen now anytime you drop any control the ideal thing is that you name it okay so we are already building an application all right this is your screen one we want it to be our landing page come to rename here and write in landing page simple and you are done now landing page remember i told you about our footer when you come to your footer your footer tells you lola you are on the way landing page if you come to the next screen rename this screen as you can just say um first screen first screen so anytime you are here the footer tells you you are on first screen now i want to be able to what navigate from this screen to the first screen what we actually have on piggy vest one of the things that you can use to achieve that nobody is touching this i just want to navigate right you can actually use the timer control but another thing that you can use and i'm going to use that so that you just see how another control works in power apps right you have learned the label control which is your label once you enter into your first screen you can see your label you have learned the label control you should rename your label control if you're following me right now the next thing is of course your first screen but we need something to link the landing page with the first screen what do we do we are going to introduce another control so you come to insert and look for button select button all right and you bring your button down here okay now we want to be able to navigate from here to the first screen what do we do i told us that we'll write something simple 
like navigate right so i'm going to round up now and hand over to david and david is going to you know take us to another level so now navigate is a function in power apps all right all you just need to do is to navigate to type in navigate of course remember i said that we are building where on the cloud it means that because we are building on the cloud you have to have a good internet so um now navigate you are going to say um button take me somewhere where do i want where do you want it to take you to so navigate inside the close and open and close bracket you're going to put in that screen which is your first screen so you are going to say navigate first screen and you can see it inside it says we actually bring it out so select first screen and your you you no more see a um error here so the next thing that we're just going to quickly do rename this button when people come into the app you don't want them to be seeing button you want them to probably see um next page or something like that you can make it bigger bring it down and change the name remember i said that you can actually change the name of or basically you can um, access your properties of each of your control either from um the list of properties here or from your properties pane here so i'm just going to stick to this one and i'm going to turn this button name to next page all right so we now have next page but see how are we going to have blue on white on burgundy on yellow so let's just make it uniform we are going to do the same thing we did with the label control now this is our button control select the button control change the color and change the text color how are we going to do that now i have shown us how to do it with our properties pane in two minutes i'm just going to quickly show us how to do it with what with a list of properties that we have here all right remember if we are using the properties pane what are we going to do we are going to select color here we are going to come to this that looks like alphabet this is going to do what change the text color and this that looks like a color pouring out from a bucket is going to do it's going to change the background of the particular control that you are on and that's how to do it using properties but we're going to use this list of properties here and the name to change your text color is just color so search for color color and you can actually just type in different kind of color code x rgba but to make it simple i don't know the color that i want there are some colors that actually come with power apps so i'm just going to type color right and i will say dots and i will just say um make this let's see if there's wine here if there's no wine we just use another color that we have let's see if there is um dumb, dumb, dumb. black yes there's black so we select black now our color is black our text color is black so we want to now change the background color of the button button has amazing properties david is going to definitely show us more things and we're going to wrap up this class right for the background of the button what do you need to do you need to look for a property called fill the fill property if you select the fill property the fill property you know you also has this rgb just change it because you need if you don't have rgb change it once you clear it you know it automatically give you black but you need to now type in color again color dot yellow so i want this to be yellow awesome it's as simple as that however your button has so you can play your app when you play your app you would see but if i over on this what happens it's turning to blue and the text color is turning to white it means that this button has other properties that you need to change right so let's just quickly change that on the button we have another property called overfill remember the background is what fill so the one that when we over is changing to blue is the overfill and we want to just take it away and do the same thing color dot what dot yellow color dot yellow right now let us play if we over 
it is no more doing that but your text color is still changing what do we do we are going to change our over color to what to black so that when we over it maintains okay so we are going to click on this list now you have to select the control that you want to manipulate so we are just going to click on drop down and click on over color and over color we are going to do the same thing color dot black so there's power in repetition and that's why i'm repeating the same thing over again over color text over color um over fill fill and color right it's as simple as that so on the top menu bar you can share your application with other people we've not gotten there we're going to show you all of that you can check a lot of other things with all these things and i want you to actually try it get curious see what you can do but before we go one of the um icons here that i want you to use and let it be your friend is the save icon remember that your app is in the cloud if you don't save it it has gone so click on save and you have saved your app but let us actually um so it's going to save but let us test to see that our app is working click on play i go to i click on next page next page actually takes me to a blank screen why because your first screen is blank and you have told this button you have said what remember the on select property you have said navigate me to where for screen so at this junction power apps is absolutely simple all you need to do is to understand what each of these control do you have so many controls and guess what if you have registered we are definitely going to do what we are definitely going to um we are definitely going to show you amazing things that you can actually do what do i mean by amazing things what i'm actually saying is we are going to send you a link that's going to explain other properties all these controls that i've just said all these things that i just did now your the link is going to teach you that so don't worry at the end of this class automatically we have automated it with the power automate and you're going to get the link and the link is going to help you understand more things that i've just shown you so right now i'm going to um just go over this while i hand over to uh, david all right so before we do that we're just going to go on a very 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 short break so the break is just for us to get to know you right we are glad to have you but tell us where you're joining us from remember if you have not um created your developer account aka.ms slash setup m365 developer is what you're going to use to create your developer account all right so let's just get right to it where are you where are you where are you where are you joining us from where are you joining us from we want to meet you we want to know you we want to know where you're joining us from so david is just going to take over and you know show us some things but before then let us see what we have in the okay increase all right we're going to do that oh i'm so sorry tile we are going to ensure that um we send you a link right we are also trying to make this training very short for you to be able to um to be able to grasp all right i can see to okay hi to god bless from nigeria we see you balkis we see you taya debola we see you ikeja we see okay you're from ikeja angelina we see you we see you all right if you know that you want okay so this is david saying hello right so while we wait from david okay i can also see uh Oluato be Paul. glad to be here thank you so much for joining us so um while we wait for david to come take us if you know that you want us to continue looking at the power app studio let me see your comment say hi say hi and i'll just go ahead with the power app studio all right yes i can see paul from redemption city i can see ayatudi ayola from lagos yes i'm smiling because i know some of these people i can see Emmanuel. hi i can see babatunde awesome 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 guys if you know that you want me 
to continue showing us more things um, about the Power Up Studio. Say yes, 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 or say hi, all right? If you have registered and you did not get the mail, we're going to check and we'll ensure that you get your mail. Oh, awesome. That means that we are enjoying the Power Up Studio training. We want us to continue Power Up Studio. So we're just going to do that. We're going to continue Power Up Studio. Awesome. So before we go, and we so we have Yemi Sadiq from UK. Awesome. We are glad to have all of you. Okay, you want us to continue Power Up Studio? Hi, Power Up Studio, please. All right. So before we continue Power Up Studio, we're just going to go on a very short break, two minutes break, and we are we are going to um go right back to it. Okay. awesome welcome back everyone so if you are still here with us we are just going to delve a little bit inside the um all right so david is back and because of that we will not be able to go back inside the power up studio all right but i have an amazing news for you which is that if you cannot yeah i know that we i can see a lot of people saying yes 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 yes. let us delve right into the power studio let's do more things so i'm going to hand over to david but the consolation is that we are immediately after this class so ensure you register immediately after this class we are going to send you a link and you have basically because you've registered you have access to us so the mail that we are using you can always reply that mail. if you have any problem we are going to you know respond to you so first thing first is that we are going to send you a link all these that i'm showing you we already have it in a youtube link and we'll send it to you all right so um before tomorrow because this training continues tomorrow so before tomorrow what we want is that you've created your m365 account and you can actually replicate all of these um all of this, you know, studio thingy that I'm actually showing you. So, hi, David. Are you ready for us? So, people are saying that we should actually continue the Power Up Studio, but David has awesome things to actually show. So, David, what do we do? We delve right into what we have, and um, you know, are you here? Yes. Awesome. Yes, All right. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, thank you. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation. Uh, basically, the introduction into Power Platform, into Power Apps, um, you know, to you know, the different tools on that Power Platform. I think that, that's fantastic because a lot of uh, people that are registered are uh, actually, you know, uh, at, the, the, at the basically at the Johnson level. So we call it Johnson level because of the popular um, show, Game of Thrones. So, you know, they keep telling that particular um, character that if, if, if you know nothing just so that's what i put it here so yeah um so i'm going to quickly share my slides now um i will just you know quickly go through uh some things um i don't know if my slide is up i think it's up now right so we'll just quickly go through it um okay 
All right. So uh, before then, I want to, you know, tell everybody, because I know that there are some people that were talking about the resolution of, of how clear the screen is. You can set your YouTube settings to 720p, as one has suggested, and you should be able to see the uh, screen very clearly. Now, um, what Lola showed you, it's, uh, you know, okay, so there's a popular saying in, uh, in Power Apps, because again, we are focusing on Power Apps, and specifically, we are focusing on Canvas App, because, uh, you know, under Power Apps, we do have Canvas Apps, we do have Model Driven App, and we do have uh, Power Pages. Uh, but for this course, we're going to focus on Canvas Apps. All right, so, uh, so for Canvas Apps, typically the way we introduce Canvas Apps is that it's a combination of Excel and PowerPoint. So in the sense that, you know, in the Excel part of it, you're going to write in some formulas. Don't worry, there are no code formulas, there are no code. It's going to be writing JavaScript or you're writing uh, Python. They are local. It's just like writing, it's fact, very, very similar to writing Excel formulas. So if you've written Excel formulas before, you have a good start. Uh, the second part is like they're doing PowerPoint. So in the sense that you drag and drop, you know, you know what you see is what you get. You, you can stretch things as you like, you can change the color, you know, just the same way you use typical softwares like PowerPoint or maybe even like Photoshop, where you have like a button screen by the side, either to the left or to the right, and you can just go in there and change properties, like, you know, to, by, by, you can customize controls. So we call it controls, we talk about controls. I think, I think the large animation controls. So, you know, you can just customize controls by changing the properties. So that's like a PowerPoint, similar to the way we, we, we work with PowerPoint, isn't it? Where you go to uh, maybe the shape, for instance, the PowerPoint, and just change some properties of that shape, and then the, property, the shape becomes bigger, it becomes smaller, you add rounded, rounded corners, for instance, to a particular uh, shape, similar to that. So part, Canvas app is like that, it's those two sides. So you have the Excel side of this of things, and you have like PowerPoint side of things, right? So that's it. Now, um, a little bit of what the last uh, you know presented uh is like the powerpoint side of things so you can see how easy it is to customize certain things like the buttons the label the screens and things like that so now i'm going to focus a little bit on the excel side of things so i'm going to talk on uh data types no so so in the uh so the excel type of things uh in power apps is what we call power effects so power effects is uh the um like the formula language has been used in Power Apps, uh, you can use that formula language to, you know, customize or controls to customize your, your tool. So we are going to be talking about that uh, quickly. Now, um, so what is so under Power uh, the most uh, uh, the first topic we're going to be talking about is data types, uh, and data types is very important. It's a very important foundational topic to understand how to use Power Effects. All right. So we're going to do just the Power data types, I'm going to do data types in Power Apps, I'm going to talk about operators. Uh, we may not be able to talk about all of them today because the time is a bit spent, but we'll, we'll see how far we can go. Then you can also look at the types of operators too. All right, so let's look at the next slide. All right, so now, uh, data types in uh, in Power Apps. Uh, so first of all, data types is actually pretty common across most technological um, tools are going to use. So what, what I mean by that is that both for local tools like Power Apps and even for local tools like maybe Python, for instance, uh, data types are very, very important to understand. It's a very foundational uh, concept. Uh, so why is it important? You see, because the most important thing I'm going to be doing with any coding tool, whether local or whether pro code is manipulation of data. I'm going to be manipulating data in some way or the other, right? I'm going to have data coming to your solution, I'm going to manipulate it, I'm going to send that data to uh, the user, so to provide value for the user. So an app that does not manipulate data in some way is not an app that does anything at all. Basically, your app just manipulates it, but that's what it's going to be at the very core of what your app is going to do. Where are going to be doing Power Apps, where are even doing JavaScript, where are even doing Python. That is what uh, it's doing. So now a data type is a set of possible values Right, and the set of allowed operations on it. Now, that is grammar, so I'll just go to just give you a simple example of what that means. So, for instance, let's say, for instance, like I'm sure everybody did mathematics, right? We did mathematics, uh, and we have some operators, so we call them arithmetic operators. If I remember those things, right? We have like addition, we have multiplication, 
we have division. Now, if you notice, we cannot use those operators on certain types of data, right? For instance, if I have a string of, let's say, text, and I have another text, I can multiply text and text. It doesn't make any sense, does it, right? So it makes sense only to multiply a number and another number. So what that suggests is that a number and a text are different data types. So typically, we categorize data by the operations that we can do on them. So that is the breakdown of data types. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, so now we have, so from uh, data types, we have, um, uh, okay, so data types in Power Apps, okay, I think I talked about that already. Okay, all right, so now, um, okay, all right, so now we have, um, so let me just, so what I explained was what I just is on the screen now. Uh, so if you consider this, you have two and then an additional operator with two is equal to four, uh, but if you look at the other one, Two plus LOD, does that make sense? It doesn't really make sense. So that suggests that two and LOD are of a different data type. Now, both of them are data or data, I guess, as a singular. Uh, they, they are, but they are different types. All right. So so that's what is important here. Now, if you look at the last part, you can see that that lower is a function. We'll talk about functions later. Uh, you can see that there's a lower to, you know, working with a particular data called LOD, which is a, a string. Uh, and I, I know the last talked about the string where you put double quotes around it. Uh, so that works on it and it gives you, you know, hello there in lower case. So that, now that means that that lower works with strings alone. If you put two there or you put four there, it will probably not work properly. It will probably fail. So that suggests that it needs, it, it, it needs, so lower needs data, it needs a particular data, but you need a data of a certain type, right? So that's why it's very important to understand data because if you don't, understand that it, then it, it, it's very functional because you're not able to work with certain functions, you're not able to work properly with certain operators, right? Okay, so uh, so I think, yeah, I will jump into, uh, let me just share my screen briefly. All right, so yeah, so this is my screen. Uh, so I have a similar home page to what you saw in the last uh, screen. Uh, so this is my developer account. So again, I, I know that we've set out links to how to set up a developer account. So, um, you know, going forward, please, uh, this course should be as practical as possible. I'm going to make it as practical as possible. I'm going to work with the studio. I'm going to work with controls. I'm going to work with properties. I'm going to be writing uh, power FX functions, right? So I'm going to be doing a lot of all those things. Uh, but don't worry, I'm going to take it step by step. Uh, uh, so you, you don't go too fast for uh, everybody. All right. Um, so now, um, so this is the screen that uh, you saw on the last uh, page. So what you can do right from here, I like can say you can start with data. Now, what does start with data mean? All right. I don't know if you can see my screen because I flag. Okay. Okay. I think it's up now. All right. So. Now, if you see my screen, you said I can, I can start my app with data. So what does that mean? That means that I have a data be I can start with that. Another option is that, um, okay, so let me try to share it again.
Oh, it's so sorry. Uh, that's so big. All right, so if, can you see my screen? Sorry, there's also still network uh, issues. Okay, so now again, you can also start with design uh, or you can start with a template. So let's just go ahead and start a black app. Yeah. So by coming here, um, apps. All right, so I can create a new canvas app. So I'm going to focus on canvas apps. Uh, so I'm going to start canvas app here. Now, once we have, so again, um, let's give it a name. Now we now I've created now fifteen minutes to open up. So from there we can look at uh, a bit more on the uh, on the data types. Well, um, well, I want to. Okay, so I don't know if you, you uh, can drop in the chat if you built any part as before. This is if you built a part as before. Um, so let me. Okay, all right, so we have a brand new app opened up now. Um, okay, I think I had to write eight days of code, but I ended up writing this of code for four hours. But anyway, uh, so now um, what I'm going to do to just demonstrate the, uh, the data types, right, is that I'm going to just add a, a new a text label. Um, so, first of all, I'm sure again, you've seen this already. So, these are the controls that you have available to you. Um, so them are categorized under input, display, and things like that. Would, would, uh, in the course of the of this course, would, would uh, uh, use more of these controls. Uh, for now, I'm going to add the text label into to our canvas. So again, that's why it's called canvas because you have the canvas like literally like a canvas. Right. So once that's added, now I'm just going to write a simple um, expression uh, inside of this space. So you can see this is the formula bar. Uh, I'm sure um, what I've mentioned that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to write. Um, so let's say we have two plus. Um, so let's say hello world. If I do this, so I'll get an error. Uh, the reason why I get an error is because I'm using a additional operation to add a number and a uh, a text. So that suggests that both of them are not of the same data type. Uh, whereas if I um, do this, so that you no know, works. Pretty fine. Um, it do work well. Cannot be converted to a number. So that error thing, and that's because for the operation to work, the hello word has to be a number. And it's not a string, so that's why that different data types. Okay, so that just to demonstrate that um, you know how we how we come about our data types. So now I'm going to uh, go back to the slide and show you the other uh, data types that we have. Okay, now. Um, 
Okay, so now we've talked about this already. So now let's go to the data types we have in power. So now we have a couple of data types. I will just go through them uh, part of time. I won't explain much of them, but I'll definitely share this slide to everybody on the call. Uh, now uh, we have, um, so first of all, we have the type called Boolean. Uh, Boolean means just true or false. Uh, yes, so there's a, there's a type of data that is determined by whether they are true or false. Uh, so think of light switch, right? So the light switch can either be on or off, right? So those are the two states that light switch can be in. So that kind of data is called a boolean, right? So it's, it's either true or false. So it has two values, true, false, true, false, that's all. Uh, so the value can be used directly in if. So the a function is called if function, functions. We'll, we'll talk about this function later. But basically, it helps us check if something is true or false, right? So for instance, it will check if a particular button is blue or not. You know, we use that to check. So that's the, the type of data. Now we have a data type called color. Now color is, uh, I, I know color should do some colors where we change the color of a button and we change the color of certain uh, controls in the app. So it has a schism type. Now we have a type called date. So date is for date, uh, uh, basically date information. So today's date, yesterday's date, uh, uh, tomorrow's date. So that is date. Now date time is just basically like date, only that the time component is included, right? So the time component is included. So for instance, if I want to know when we started this uh, um, live event, the exact time, and now I have to store that as a date time, right? So that's it's called the date time. Right, so that's uh, and by the side, those are the examples. Uh, you don't need to, to, to know them for now, but just to keep, the, keep that in mind. So, we have boolean, we have color, we have date, we have date time, uh, then we have number. So, number is what I showed you now, two. Uh, so it can be old number, just like two, three, ten, it can be uh, decimal number, so like 3.05, like I showed you now. It could even be uh, exponential. So, for instance, you could have for exponential two, you know, like in mathematics, but typically you don't use that um, most of the time, but it's possible, right? Now, uh, we have what we call a record. Now, a record is a, it's like a, it's a compound data type. So we call this, this type of data type a compound data type, right? So what it, it does, like, it contains instances of the other types, of fact, instances of any type, to be honest, right? Can be, uh, can be stored in the record. Now, a record is, typically like a sort of information that are related to each other, right? So for instance, if I'm, if I'm looking at a set of questions related to a particular employee in an organization, it can be stored as a record. Now, another way to think about a record is a row in the table. So now we're going back to Excel now, isn't it? So when you think about a row in the table, now imagine you have a, a employee record save list of table in Excel. So one row can represent an employee, right? So you can have his name, you can have his age, you can have his date of employment, can have his employment status and etc etc all that information is stored in a row isn't it so that row it can be it can it can be thought of as a record in power apps because sometimes we need to work with that kind of data now a table is just a, a collection of records right so just like we have a, a record that's related to a row you can have a table that is like related to an excel table or an excel sheet right so in an excel sheet is a collection of rules isn't it so you have row one row two row three up to like row, maybe one million, I think Excel can take up to one million. So a table in power apps is just similar, it's just a collection of records. So all the records will have the same names for, for all the fields. So when we talk about uh, understanding uh, tables and records in later topic, uh, we'll look in, dive deep into records and tables. So that's that. Now we have a text. Text is a Unicode text string. So you don't have to worry about that uh, technical but just anything you write, the text basically. So, someone's name is a text, uh, the name of a department is a text, the name of the organization is a text, what else can be a text? Uh, a description of something is a text. So, anything that is not, that has characters, half numeric characters is a text basically. So, uh, also, so I just put it to already 13 minutes past time, but I'll, I'll just stop at 10 minutes past time. So operators, so operators are, as I, as I showed you, these are the things that we used to 
manipulate our our values, our data types, right? And operators work with certain data types. Like for instance, the arithmetic operator that also works with numbers, uh, right? So we could have other operators that work with strings. We could have operators that work with boolean. We could have operators that work with dates, right? So what are the, what operators do we have? So we have three categories of operators. We have the arithmetic operators, we have the cooperation operators, and we have the logical operators, right? So the arithmetic operators that I should be were like the addition, uh, just to add, so we have the plus sign, so that's straightforward. Subtraction, again, to subtract two numbers, we have the minus sign. Multiplication, we use the star sign because, uh, so that is road sheet eight in most computers, that is the star sign is for uh, multiplication. We don't have like, we don't use the times because we, I think it's X, so we don't use that, so just the star sign, right? Division, we use the, uh, I think this is the forward slash, I guess, yeah, this forward slash, and then we have expo exponent exponentiation. So exponentiation is like uh, 10 raised to power five, something like that. Uh, so we use the, I think it's called the caret sign, uh, it's on your, it's on most keyboard on, hmm, on shift six. So when you hold shift six, you have the current sign. Uh, we typically don't use it, but it's just, it's good to know it's there. Now, comparison, uh, we have the equal to sign. So the equal to sign is comparing two things, right? So let's say, for instance, you have uh, a value that is a, maybe a number five, and on that value that is a number six, you can compare the both of them and to return true or false. So we use equals to to compare, right? So we use it to compare two values. Now, when you're comparing values, you must compare values of the same data types, right? So the same data types as Right. However, the cooperation value itself can work on any data type. Just that when you are comparing the one on the left side of the of the of the operator and the right side of the operator will be of the same data type, right? So they will have greater time, greater than. So greater than works with numbers uh, typically. Uh, so five is greater than six is greater than five, etc. So less than or equal to. So again, we want to compare is five less than or equals to six it is so that's true it is it is less than six so it's fine you know, it's not equals to six but it's less than six so it's less than or it's after greater than or equals to two so greater than or equals to or less than or equals to then when you use the less than sign combined with the greater than sign together you have the not equal to so it's the same uh, is five not equal to six, which is true, right? But if you have not equal to five, that would be false because they are equal to each other. So that's what not equal to is. Now the logical operators are uh, uh, we can have. So the logical operator works on the blue. Right? So you could have true and false, uh, true or false. Uh, you could have the you know, so, so uh, we'll talk about that more because of time. We'll stop here. And we we'll continue from there the next the next session. But basically, they work with the boolean types. So we could have true and true, which is equal to true. We could have true and false, which is equal to false. And we could have maybe uh, true or false, which is equal to true. And then you have the not operator. So the not operator works by inverting the value of the boolean value, of the boolean value, right? So for instance, if you have true and you combine it with the not operator, you get false. If you have false and you combine it with not operator, you get true. So think about the not as a kind of switch uh, operation, right? So yeah, your light's on right now. You click on a switch. There's only one operation you can do on your, on your light switch when it's on. You can only switch it off, right? And when it's switched off, you can only do one operation on your light switch. You can switch it on. So that's exactly what the not operator is doing, right? So it's, it, it works with the boolean type. So we'll stop here for now because of time. We are 17 minutes past of time. Um, thanks. Thank you guys for the patience. Uh, uh, I will Awesome. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, let me just quickly do a recap, right? You might be wondering what exactly is all these things that we have learned today. Number one thing that you should know that we've learned today is you have learned that Power Apps Canvas app is what you see is what you get. And that was what I showed you. I showed you how to navigate between apps. I showed you some controls. Now, what David has taught us is and what I'm expecting to see in the little app. I remember to save your app. One of the things that David has also taught us is in your app, I want to see some calculations, right? Two plus two equals four. And that's what uh, um, operators are. Now, the plus, right, is what is, you know, doing the addition for you. The asterisk, when it was telling you about um, 
uh, when you press uh, say control eight right or all of that it gives you star means that you can do things like two times two means that inside your power apps just the same way you can do with javascript and python you can actually do some calculations right now let's bring it to the context of organization imagine if you build a leave app and you want to be able to calculate say that an employee has 15 days right because the all of power platform is actually looking at a business case right if you're a power platform developer you are going to an organization to help them to build solutions that will help the organization so if you want to help them to build a live app right they have an employee has 15 days an employee has taken five days how do you calculate the remaining days? That's what David is showing us that, okay, aside from the look and feel that I've shown you and how to navigate between pages, how can you do little, little operations? And that's why we have explained operator categories, right? So all the things that we have taught today, both what you see is what you get and the operator, right? The calculation and all of that. We're going to send it to you to your side. And that's why it's important for you to what to register. So the class continues tomorrow, seven to eight tomorrow. We'll try our best, you know, to fit everything that we want to teach into the time. So I said that some people are saying that we are fast. It's because we don't want to take so much of your time. All right. But the links to so everything I've shown, everything David has shown, we're gonna send you links and we're also going to send you material. So thank you so much. And before we go, David, let me just quickly bring some people um, up here from their comment, all right? We have Ninja Tech Mentor, K from UK and Picking Waving. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from UK. We have somebody called YouTube user and he's from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. We have somebody from Ghana. Thank you for joining us. We have Ayatone from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. We have Paul Adetola for Redemption City. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Chinonso from um Lagos, Nigeria. So Toby Ojo also was helping somebody to say 720 uh pixel is fine we have uh Taya Debola. so we see all of you we have Muba Dauda. we see all of you and thank you so much for joining us today however we have taken all of the things that you have said and all the things that you know you have told us today and we ensure that tomorrow when we come what do we do we we'll ensure that tomorrow training will be better than today's training the network will be better the field that you get will be better but for it to actually be better guess what you're going to do quickly let me show you is going right there aka.ms slash setup m365 is actually what you are going to do and it's going to help you why because you are going to have um the developer accounts and you're going to be able to do all these things that we are saying all the things we'll send to you you'll be able to do it in your own tenant if you have the developer account how do you do that aka.ms slash setup m365 developer you're going to see everything there so the questions i want to be getting tomorrow is how do i navigate from page to page how do i do the calculation that david has shown how do i you should have your developer account already all right so we're going to see you tomorrow same time 7 p.m to 8 p.m and thank you so much i can see all about your invoke saying this is amazing thank you Mulala and david for setting up this session remember this session is free share with people share with friends and let us meet again tomorrow so david do you have any last words to say Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind messages. Um, so, yeah, apologies for the network, but it's going to be much better tomorrow. Uh, um, yeah, it is, at the end of this day, I know this course you should be able to do your own paths on how to get this shit. Thank you. All right. Thank uh, you so much, everybody. It's a bye from us. Bye, guys.